mount solar station to tank using supplied solar station bracket and hardware. Plumb solar station to tank using plumbing fittings and pipes supplied with package. Connect line set to solar station using DN16 compression fitting to attach the solar station. Once complete, your solar system assembly should look like this. Mount expansion tank to wall bracket using nut. Unscrew bottom cap to release pressure from the nitrogen side. Expansion tank comes pre-charged with nitrogen. For training purposes, we'll assume a high differential between collectors and expansion tank of 20 feet. With this assumption made, the pre-charge side of the expansion tank will need to be at 23.5 psi. Release nitrogen from the expansion tank until you reach 23.5 psi. Mount safety cap valve on expansion tank using supplied fiber washer. Make sure additional fiber washer is already installed at air purge. Shut off ball valve on safety cap valve. Be aware that safety cap valve can be locked into position using front screw. Connect safety cap valve to flexible expansion hose using fiber washer. Connect the expansion tank flexible hose to the solar station using fiber washer. In order to pressure test the loop with air, you will need to build your own adapter device to connect to the solar station. This device will connect to the charging port using a 3 quarter inch GHT fitting. Fasten the device hand tight, then use channel locks to properly seal. Connect air compressor to charging device. Open ball valve to fill glycol loop with air. Increase pressure until reaching 70 psi. Close ball valve and make sure that you withstand pressure for at least 20 minutes. Your collectors should be covered to allow for measuring pressure at constant conditions. Once you've verified all connections and make sure that there are no leaks, release air from the glycol loop by opening the drainage ball valve. Pressure will decrease back to zero PSI. Connect the pressure side of the pump to the filling port. Use channel lock to properly seal connection. Then connect the return side of the pump to the drainage port. Again, use channel lock to properly seal. Use Shuko supplied solar fluid for charging of the glycol loop. Fluid already comes pre-mix and does not require additional mixing. Fill charging station with glycol. Note, once the charging station is activated, fluid inside the charging station will decrease very quickly. Keep additional jugs ready for refill. Open ball valve at charging port. Open ball valve at drainage port. Turn on charging station to start filling the solar loop with glycol. Purge the air from the glycol loop using the slotted valve on the air separator. As soon as one drop of glycol has exited the air separator, all the air has been purged. 
to fill pump cavity with glycol. Open the cold shutoff valve on the solar station above the pump to 45 degrees. This will disable the check valve and allow fluid to flow backwards through the pump. Move the valve back to the normal position. Open. This can be done a few times while the charging station is on. To speed the removal of air from the glycol loop, try burping the system. Step 1. Close the return valve at the bottom and allow pressure to increase. Step 2. Open the valve suddenly to increase the fluid velocity to flush out air bubbles. Step 3. Close the valve and repeat a few times. Step 4. Purge the air at the air separator. Step 5. Repeat steps 1 to 4 every 5 minutes for a minimum of 20 minutes. The loop should now be free of air. Close drain valve, close fill valve, and notice that the pressure gauge on the solar station reads 40 to 60 psi. Turn off the charging station, but don't remove the hoses. Gradually open the safety cap valve, allowing glycol to enter the expansion tank. Open the air bleeder valve on the safety cap valve to remove air in the flexible expansion tank hose. Notice that the pressure in the glycol loop is down to 23 psi. Based on our previous assumption of 20 feet high differential, the pressure inside the glycol loop will need to be 28 psi. Before starting charging procedure over again, close ball valve at safety cap valve to isolate expansion tank. Turn on charging station and open ball valve at charging port, increasing pressure inside the glycol loop. Close ball valve at charging port and notice that pressure is back at 40 to 60 psi. Now reopen gradually ball valve at safety cap valve and notice pressure decreasing above the required set point. Plug in controller to outlet and check for warning lights. Using the previously mentioned training video, go into the expert menu. You will need to enter 4 times 0 to confirm the password. Then go into manual mode menu and activate actuators by changing setting to permanent. In order to activate the solar pump, change relay A10 to on. Then confirm flow rate at the pump by going back to the information menu and reading flow rate. Pump should be set to speed 3 to accelerate purging of air. Allow for circulator to run for at least 20 minutes. Verify fluid is circulating by reading the flow value inside the information menu of the controller. After a few minutes, operate the air bleeder valve on the air separator and recharge the system to the correct value listed in the manual if required. Once all the air has been removed from the system, Change pump setting to achieve the right flow setting. This will most likely be speed 2. Decrease pressure inside the glycol loop either at the air separator or at the drainage valve. In our example, notice how the pressure decreases to our 28 psi value. Change manual settings back to auto. Under the settings menu, ensure the maximum tank temperature is set to 140. Verify all settings in controller are correct. 
and check system pressure and ensure safety cap valve is open.